Uh, we've got a confirmation from Mike and a part number. Okay, and we can get, a, get a, some of these prototypes? It looks like we can get the prototypes. What do they want for them? Uh, it looks like they're 900 for the side with the, uh, uh, that has the cabling on it. Five meters of cable five, five, and, the, five and the cable. coupler. Yep, and then 450 uh, for the other side. Okay. And, uh, and that's, that'll, so we need one of each. So thirteen hundred and fifty dollars. So you you want to know why electric cars are expensive? <laughs> the cable is right, and a plug, and with a plug, right, and the female mm -hmm. that goes in the car are going to be initially one thousand three hundred and fifty dollars for the pair. That's correct, and that pretty much prevents you from just plugging your car in to the wall anywhere you want, right. Well, it won't prevent us. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have um, the, the regular AC mm -hmm. connector that we use, although that's got a problem, too. You know, we've been using these little 15-amp right. connectors, and I'm going to stay with that. We're going to have that to plug into 120 volt out on the road charging. You're going to have to have it. Right. Um, we're going to put in a J1772 um, SAE. Right. 2009 mm -hmm. version of the uh, plug, the the part that goes on the car, so I can charge at a charge station. Eventually, Eventually. all the charge stations will use this plug. Right. And then at home, uh, we're going to kind of go to a, uh, a DC uh, charging uh, uh, type thing where we can charge a large pack in an hour, hour mm -hmm. and a half, something mm -hmm. like that. So you're going to wind up with, with three charging ports on the car. <laughs> just well, right now, I guess it. we'll need them. And that's, <laughs> uh, that's pretty much um, the, the thing. If um, this catches on uh, to get AC into the car and get it charging. And again, the charger in the car has to be designed to call for the amount of current, really, from right. the charge station. AC current that it then converts to DC and charges the batteries. Uh, the uh, uh, it it has to to be able to to note that the the uh, cords connected uh, to do the interlock, do the interlock to keep you from driving right. off. And the cord's got an interlock that it doesn't energize until it detects the car. The car. So when you're walking around in rain with a cord, there's no electric in you're it fine. other than the signal uh, um, voltage. is a 12-volt uh, uh, signal uh, on the small pins that it uses to do this handshake, basically, right. Right. with the car. To, and then it turns on the power. The car uses it mm, to do that, and there you go. Uh, it's an interesting problem. Uh, it's one of those things, like a lot of things in these electric cars, and boy, they, uh, I call them online engineers, these guys who have uh, gotten their education on the forums. There you go. Uh, and some practical field level typing experience on the forums. And oh, that's easy. And they'll take something that's actually uh, uh, quite uh, uh, not a problem and blow it into this huge debate. Turn it into one. And if I bring up something like this, they're like, oh, that's not a problem. Not a problem. <laughs> you just uh, use an Avcon or something. Well, it's a problem. Uh, and the problem changes while you play with it. Uh, as these batteries get better, just in the last year, I thought a 20 kilowatt hour pack was enormous. Mm -hmm. that, that's yeah. a tremendous, it's a frightening amount of power to be mm -hmm. riding around on. Um, and now we're going with the weenie pack on the mini <laughs> That's right. at 40 kilowatt, 40 kilowatt hours. <laughs> uh, and, um, you know, some of the things they're talking about with the batteries. Uh, the quick charge thing is, uh, has been a red herring as well. Uh, the batteries, we can recharge these batteries right now at 3C, 300 mm -hmm. amps mm -hmm. on a 100 amp hour cell. Uh, and I can't make 300 amps right now. No, uh, no. At, at any voltage, hardly. Um, we're actually going to have to build an, an electric car in a box with wheels on it so I can do this with the batteries right. and, and the whole thing. The whole but thing. it's a tremendous amount of power and current. And um, even at a uh, 75 amp AC level, 
The reason we've gotten away with this is that typically our little Bruce's, which are 3.3, 3.6 kilowatt mm -hmm. chargers, that I told you were 3,200 and then corrected that to 3,600. The reason I get confused is Victor's very good about keeping his prices updated <laughs> as the dollar falls. That's right. As it rises, I don't know how, how well he does with right. that, but as it falls, he, that Bruce of Chargers, $3,900 Oh, now. man. Oof. So it's a whopper. Um, we got to keep that dollar propped up. But it does uh, 3.6 kilowatts. Well, that's, uh, it'll put about 25 amps into our little sports car, mm -hmm. and it'll draw about 25 amps. And we're doing that through what's classically uh, a 15-amp connector. Ours is made for marine applications, and so it's a little heavier. A little heavier, yeah. Uh, I get some pretty good 15-amp, uh, 120-volt uh, uh, AC uh, um, connectors and and kind of go over. We do 25, 30 amps through one of those things, mm -hmm. and I'm getting away with it. Um, yep. We're not going to do 30 amps or 40 amps through that connector. No, it's uh, it it'll just melt it. Yeah, um, yeah. that's an accident waiting to happen. And yeah. so um, you know we've hit the limits of that. We're going to have to have one in a car to be able to charge off of 120 on, volts right. AC at Grandma's house. All right. But um, that's not really going to get us back home uh, when we get up to a 50 okay. or 60 kilowatt hour pack. Um, and so there are some issues of infrastructure that, that there uh, uh, are going to have to be dealt with um, in order to make all this work. But there are sort of signs of success. Um, that that we could buy that much batteries and get them in a car and get it to roll. Yeah, at all. Was, right. was not a problem. Right. Now it's getting to be one. And uh, so I think that's going to, so that's why I get kind of off on this uh, connector and so forth. Now we have at least a standard connector they can put in all the cars. Right. And we'll put them in ours. Um, mm -hmm. Because if we're out somewhere and want to use a public charge station, we have to be equipped Got to do it. that. And yeah. not just with the connector, we have to have the electronics on board. The Brusa actually right. is set up to do this handshake right. Right. already. It was They were out ahead of the game. Um, but uh, uh, it's not just have the plug. You have to have your, your charger and your, your uh, interlock on your contactor and so forth set up for this function. Right. And... Um, so I, uh, I think it's kind of an important thing. Ultimately, this goes to direct DC to DC charging. I don't have another way. You can't right. carry enough electronic. The physical size of the components to do a conversion from AC to DC at these power levels is uh, you, can, you can't put it in a car. No. As big as a car. And it's not a thing you can miniaturize. This, this is not like after 30 years of everything being going to smaller, faster, and lower power, we're going the other way now. Right. Um, it's bigger, heavier, and higher power, and right. um, it's it, it does not lend itself to miniaturization at all. No. Um, you have to have heavy stuff and heavy cooling. Mm -hmm. um, so then you get into a, a really a home situation and ultimately charging stations right. where you can dial in a charge voltage and they'll, with some intelligence, do the constant current, mm -hmm. constant voltage thing for your um, voltage level at a two or 300 amp level. And those are pretty much going to be battery banks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. They could be lead acid. They could be... Uh, Lithium ion, I, the lead acids are just a lot less expensive for that. Right. And we do it just fine in right. a stationary application. And then you have to be charging them day and night, basically. All the time. Yeah. Um, so when the next car comes in, you've got enough mm -hmm. uh, um, energy there to um, top them off. Right. But the batteries are ready. I can charge that, uh, that car um, in uh, 20 minutes. Uh, right based on the batteries, and uh, we're actually already putting some uh, connectors on the car for that. Let me show you. All right. Here I am at the uh, Mini Cooper. We've uh, gotten a little ahead of our videotaping uh, on account of some of the work's got to be kind of interesting now. 
and we've been doing some of it. We uh, have run a conduit, just a piece of PVC pipe, uh, down the tunnel and wired up our battery packs and brought them out with this orange cable. Um, we, we're kind of going to the orange uh, welding cable. It's flexible. It carries quite a bit of current. And um, the uh, emergency response uh, people that would uh, have to deal with an accident or so forth are kind of trained these days that yellow or orange cables are high voltage. So we've brought this out here. Here's our negative uh, cable, and I've set up a little terminal block here for it where we can tie different things into it and test different, our heater and whatever. Uh, this is the positive uh, terminal is over here. Now, understand, I can actually touch one of these terminals. This is 